Barna survey, 22% of the respondents thought Jesus was a fictional character. Another 17% said they weren't sure. Of those who said Jesus was a real person, many thought he was a wise teacher, but not a divine one. The key question is, what does the archaeological record say? CBN's latest documentary, Written in Stone, reveals the answer. So far from 150 years of archaeology, whatever we find either amends the Bible or is not related to the Bible, but it doesn't reject the Bible. None of it rejects any of the biblical stories. We have a biblical tradition and we have the archaeology. And the question is what the relationship between the two. If you want to walk on the particular street where Jesus and the apostles walked on, this is the place you're going to go. The story of the Church of the Nativity is really one that's quite interesting. Somewhere within that large compound was the family home, even though we may not know exactly where X marks this spot. It makes sense for this place to be the place of the crucifixion. Does it fit the right period? Does it show evidence of that era? We have to say this is a very strong case. Today there are attempts to say that the real tomb of Jesus was elsewhere. When you read the Gospels, everything complies very well to the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. The period is right, and the location is right. There is no reason to look for another place. When he came to Capernaum, he was home. He was in the house. Whose house? What house? If we have to give a grade, we're going to give this a B plus, A minus. People know where Peter lived. It was an ideal place for Jesus and his walks between Nazareth and the lake to stop here. So was Jesus in the synagogue? I would say you'd need to be a very, very industrious person to prove he wasn't. When Jesus comes to Jerusalem, as a believing Jew, he will spend a lot of time on the Temple Mount. Where did Jesus walk? There's no question he walked on these steps because this is the main entrance to the temple. When Jesus turned upside down the tables of the money changers, they fell upon some floor. We have that floor. We have those floors upon which Jesus could have walked. You don't want to believe what's written in the Bible? Fine. See what archaeology is teaching you. Well, Aaron Zimmerman is the writer and director of Written in Stone, and it's the latest in a long line for her of Emmy-nominated features from CBN Films. And Aaron, I've lost track of the number of times you've been nominated for your writing and directing, but welcome to the 700 Club. It's good to see you. Thanks, Gordon. And it's four. It's four. Okay. <laughs> Well, let's let's look at the film and and let's go right into the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. Why do you think that's the place where Jesus died and was buried? Well, it's not really what I think, it's what history thinks. And in the film, we go way back to about 100 years after Jesus. Um, about A.D. 132, the Romans invaded Jerusalem and wanted to just completely decimate it. Uh, they wanted to er erase the memory of the Jews. Um, and what, what ancient societies did is when you conquer a country, the first thing you do is you go to their holy sites and you knock them down and you build your own temple there. So the Roman army comes in and says, where are the holy sites? Okay, number one is the Temple Mount. So great, they build a temple there. The other site that they were given is the area where the Church of the Holy Sepulchre is now, where Jesus' tomb was. And so they said, all right. And they kind of did a double insult 
uh, they went there and they built a temple and then they put statues. They put one statue on top of Golgotha where Jesus was crucified. And then they put another statue on top of his tomb. So that pretty much says to me, the Romans wouldn't put all that time and effort into building a temple and, and doing all of that in this kind of place that was a little bit outside the city if it were not an important spot. One of the surprises, so, one of the surprises for me in all of that is the graffiti that was found uh, literally on the wall of that Roman temple. Tell us about that. Yes, graffiti has been our friend um, in the ancient world because it, it's told us a lot. Um, down at the bottom, bottom, bottom of the Holy Sepulchre Church, and you kind of have to get permission to go down here, is um, a piece of graffiti, and it's a drawing of a ship. And that ship is has been looked at by every maritime expert out there, and they've all said this ship belongs to the second century, which is 100 years after Jesus. So it's very early. And keep in mind, the church was built 200 years after that. So this graffiti is 200 years older than the church, which means that it was inscribed on the Roman temple. Now that's pretty gutsy. And under the ship is a phrase in Latin that says Domine Evimus. It means, it, it can mean two things. It means, Lord, we have arrived and Lord, we have gone. It's kind of like a double use. If you say, are you going to the party or are you coming to the party? It means the same thing. So that's kind of an interesting double meaning. You, you think that Christian pilgrims might have come here saying, Lord, we have come. We've come to this place where the greatest thing in human history has happened. And it can also mean, Lord, we are going, you know, we're, we're fulfilling the Great Commission. We're going on this ship and we're going to spread the gospel. So it's, it's very interesting. I'm, I'm shocked that it survived the destruction of that Roman temple and it's actually older than church. So that shows us that at least a hundred years after Jesus was killed, was died and rose again, people are seeing that as a holy site. Well, let's turn, turn to Bethlehem and one of the most beautiful churches I've been to and Certainly, uh, it's the oldest church in Christianity, uh, the church in the nativity. What does the film say about that? Uh, we go back all the way with this one, too. Um, we go back to 100 years after Jesus was born, to the second century, to a ch one of the church fathers named Justin Martyr. Um, he went to Bethlehem, and he inquired of the locals. He wanted to know where was Jesus born. And the locals took him to this cave, this spot that is, you know, where that church is now. So a hundred years after that, another church father named Origen went to that same spot. Now this is a hundred years apart and the locals are still showing him the same exact spot. And now a hundred years after that, Constantine's mother, Helena, has come to the Holy Land and her son, the new emperor, has said, find all these holy sites. So she goes to the locals and says, where is the spot that Jesus was born? And they show her the same spot. Okay, so that's three Christian people that have documented it. Now we'll go back to the Romans again. Uh, I said earlier that they built the temples on the holy spots. Well, they went out to Bethlehem and they built a temple to Adonis on the spot of Jesus' birth. Now, Bethlehem was a backwater. There was no reason that any Roman temple should be there. It had no importance. It was a tiny little village. So why would you go to all the trouble to build a giant pagan temple if that was not considered a holy spot? So we're going back to the early, early history. And as you said, it's the oldest church that's been in continuous use. So the tradition is great there. Now, can we say inside the church, there's a little star on the floor in the cave and it says Jesus was born here. Can we say that's legitimate? No, uh, somewhere, but we can say somewhere on the grounds of that church, that was the home of Joseph's family. Uh, let's turn to what, what I consider one of the surprises. Uh, I've been to Israel many times going all the way back to 1969 and, um, I didn't know about this one. It's Zion Church. It's right in the middle of, of Jerusalem. Uh, what's the significance of that? Yeah, this is a really interesting. Uh, you get on a tour bus in Israel and it is not going to take you here. Um, it's on Mount Zion, uh, the place where the, the upper room or the place that they consider to be the upper room on Mount Zion. If you go just a few steps out, kind of toward a parking lot, it's, it's a bit strange looking. There's sort of a cage over it because people were throwing trash down in it. 
Um, but you go underground and it's this combination of synagogue and church. You walk right in down the steps is a mikveh, which is a Jewish ritual bath, and which we believe they later used to baptize people in. And keep in mind, most of the believers at that time in Jerusalem were Jewish. Um, so they had sort of a combination. They were Jewish believers of Christianity on the steps and there's a, a little sort of a gathering room and then there are underground tunnels and there are trapdoors, which tells us number one that was constructed in a time of persecution when they felt like they were going to need a way of escape because somebody was going to come and stop them uh, and number two the plaster down there that is on the walls does date to the first century which was shortly after the time of christ so that could be, there's a strong tradition on Mount Zion that that's the place where the Last Supper took place and that's the place where Pentecost took place. So there was from very early on, the Christians considered that to be a significant place. And so this, this again is not something you're gonna see on a tour bus, but if you go to Israel with me someday, I'll take you. All right, well, watch out, people will take you up on that. Well, <laughs> All right, Aaron, thank you for being with us, and thank you for all that you do, these, the, the writing, the directing, these wonderful films. Uh, very much appreciated. Thank you so much. And thank you. All right. Well, Written in Stone covers the life and ministry of Jesus through the fall of Jerusalem, and you can get the DVD or you can watch it out right now through streaming. All it takes is a gift of any dollar amount, and your support will allow us to bring more of these wonderful films to you. So if you'd like it, call us, 1-800-700-7000. You can go to cbn.com slash written in stone. You can also text STONE to 51555, and today you can get a guided tour by Aaron Zimmerman of all the wonderful places in Israel that prove the biblical record. That's one of the amazing things. Archaeology is proving the historical record of the Bible. And no archaeological discovery in Israel disagrees with the Bible. You can have this record. It's an hour and 20 minutes. It'll take you on a wonderful tour of Israel. So if you like it, give us a call. 1-800-700-7000.